Good morning crochet time and here is what we're going to be doing today. This cute sort of perhaps semi Easter themed but obviously a bunny rabbit can be it for any time. We have a little pom-pom tail there. It's quite simple to do. Just long little bits I think that's the only problem with it. I did it in a double knit yarn so here are the colours I did this one in. So we have a cream and it's got a slight plus sparkle in it. This one it is lovely and that's what I used for the pom-pom tail but it can be any yarn. I'm not going to use that today. I've used this sort of, well, you could argue skin tone-ish, it's a peachy colour. You can use any skin tone, of course, that you wish. And I did it in the brown because I thought it was quite a neutral colour. But I had considered doing it in some sort of either rainbowy colours or some pastel colours. And somebody else mentioned it, um, Emma, hi Emma, um, on Instagram. And she, she's right, I had thought about it and she's going to be doing that as well. So I thought, why not? Let's get a bit of colour in there. And I'm going to use this baby blue, okay? So we can move the brown out of the way. You can use a lot of remnants for this. It does not take a lot of yarn. I also have a pom-pom maker. Up to you whether you use one. I have a three, turn it around the right way, millimetre crochet hook. If you use a 3.5, you could even use a 4 because it is a double knit yarn after all. You just come out with a larger bunny, that's all. And in this little tube here, I have a few little bits and um, bobs. I have a little bit of black, which is for the hair, but again, depending on your colour scheme, you can choose a different colour. I have oh, lots of safety eyes. I don't need all those though, so I'm going to put them to one side because I'm going to drop them everywhere. And if I can get it out... I thought put it all together, it'd be easier to show you. It was not. Right, and I also have, this is just a little scrap piece of lace. This is actually a piece of lace that was taken off something else because I always do that, especially if it's a piece of vintage clothing or older sort of clothing. Um, sometimes there's some beautiful laces on them. It's always worth picking them off and they're great for little bits and bobs. So that, that is what that is. So we have our ingredients, so to speak, our materials. I have my scissors and I have my needles over to one side and my little stitch marker you will need a stitch marker for this one and i have my little kiwi from uh, my range of stitch markers so i'll pop that there so we're going to start with the face first so we'll move the blue we'll move all the bits and we'll get on with it let me find the right end it is an amigurumi style well i'll not do it at all if i can't find the end what am i doing there we go it's an amigurumi style, so it's worked in the spiral rather than any stop starting for any join. So the first thing we need, like with any, we need our slip knot. If you haven't done amigurumi before, I suggest you either have a look at the... I've got a beginner's sort of how-to amigurumi, but you might find somebody else is easy to watch or something like that. So have a look around, just type in amigurumi. Um, strange spelling, I know. But it uh, will give you some advice and some information because it is so addictive when you get into it. So for the little head, we're going to start with two chain, which nearly all my crochet does, doesn't it? And into the first one, we're going to do six double crochets. Now, remember a double crochet. We're in. We pull through. We have two on the hook. We pull through both. I'll do one more slow. We pull it through. Pull through two. So that's two. I want six. So I'll go a little bit faster. Three four five and six i'm just going to pull this bit tight it tightens up that hole in the center now into each of these six we're going to do two double crochets so this is our first one in we go first one's always a bit awkward to get into so one two so that's two in the first one two in the second in number three it's squeaky wool in number four that's two in each remember two in number five and two in our last one number six we now have 12 stitches there i'm tightening that up again it's sometimes easier to do a couple of rounds before you do pull that tight but you do need to make sure it is tight we are again going to do two in each i've got to double check i've got a pattern written aside of me it's such a messy pattern today so two in each is going to give us 24 because we have 12 there so here we go so i'm just going to count the single numbers of the stitches i'm going in but i'm putting two in each so that is one Two, three, 
all double crochets four five six Ooh, wasn't six. That should have been seven. One more in there, and that makes seven. Seven. Eight. Nine. And I dropped it again. Nine. Ten. Two more. Eleven. And two in that last one. So we now have 24 stitches. Now this is either going to be the top or the bottom of the head. It doesn't matter. It's not the front. It's just the way it sits. So we're going to be doing double crochet rounds now. Just double crochet rounds. So I'm going to bring in my stitch marker. I'm going to put my yarn a split a bit there. So we just pop it in just directly below where I've just finished. There we go. So I know start and stop now. So I don't have to worry about counting so much. Sometimes I do. If I'm on my own, I still end up counting. I don't know why I do that. We're actually going to do five rounds of just double crochet. So just one double crochet into every single stitch. Oh, no one to miss it. Sometimes if you can't see a, a stitch, just stretch it a little bit and you will find it. There we go. I'm off, I'm off. So as I say, we have five rounds of this one. So I have got my pen and paper ready. There's a first, I've actually got the pen there. And so I'm not counting objects instead of writing it down. You'll know what I mean if you've seen my other videos. So round and round and round we go. As I said, there is a few parts for this one, um, so there's a bit of sewing up, but it's not too bad. Alright, that's our round one, so I've got my pen here, I'm going to mark it up there because it's got all sorts of markings over this piece of paper. So I need to make sure I get the round right one. So we're now on round two, so I will go a little bit faster. I know, obviously, some people prefer me to go slower, but just pop into the settings and slow me down and you'll be able to see it at a slower pace um but then again i know some of you will be sort of well past me and you've probably already done your five rounds so those people probably sort of fast forward or sort of pause and then come back to me that's the beauty of uh, youtube you can rewatch, rewatch if you're not sure on something or you can slow things down you can speed things up um i didn't even realize for ages those settings were there but you can do that which so it does make it easier i know sometimes if i'm watching something that it's not a craft that i do because i do sort of dabble in other crafts um I sometimes watch the video through first, then think about it and then go back and then look through a couple more times um, and then do it really slowly. And I do. I just stop, start, stop, start as I'm watching the person. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. So that is the second one, because obviously you can't work at everybody's speed. Everybody's going to be different. So can you see it's starting to curl up? Let's straighten it out a little bit. So we're on round three. might feel a little bit weird using a three millimeter hook with double knit because usually you think oh double knit it's you'd be minimum of a 3.5 anything up to a 4.5 um but i just like it because it makes it a little bit tighter but as i did mention you could do this with a four mil hook and it would look great it would look exactly the same but just larger so if you wanted to make some slightly taller ones or you could do different sizes um which would look really cute as well. You could do it in a different yarn. You could do it in a thicker yarn if you wanted to, or a finer yarn. The beauty of crochet, and with most patterns in, include that are in the sort of wool genre, I suppose, you can take it and use a different hook size or a different needle size, and you can make it smaller or larger. Right, that is three. We only have two more to go. I've got to remember to put the eyes in. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but I started doing another one for myself. Um, 
and I did the hair down, carried on decreasing, I stuffed it all, fastened it off and then oh I've not put any eyes in. So there is a point where we do need to put those eyes in. Little bunny keeps getting moved about, let's move it over there. So we're almost round on our fourth round. Oh, can you see I've split it? Again, that's the thing with a smaller hook. You do have to be quite sort of precise where you're popping it because it can easily miss or split a stitch. But I think the results are worth it. Right, that was round for round number four. Last round before we start doing any decreasing. This is a style craft yarn I'm pretty sure I'm using at the moment. I think style craft are a nice quality yarn and they're not too expensive either. I mean, I am guilty of every now and again sort of paying out for an expensive yarn, um, sort of hand dyed, etc, etc. And they are gorgeous and I will sometimes sort of make items maybe for my for the smart dolls and that to sell if it's sort of something like that or just, just for myself. Um, but I think this is a yarn everybody's got. Everybody's got a bit of double knit, whether whether it's from different shops, different companies, but you'll have some double knits somewhere and you can see it doesn't take a lot, does it? Right, so we are round with our fifth round. We need to do a bit of decreasing, but do we put the eyes in yet? I don't think so. I think we need to do a little bit of decreasing first. So our next round, we're only decreasing by four stitches. So you're going to do two together and then four D double crochets, one, two, three, and four. If you're not sure, again, on this stitch, I will go through it. So you go in as if you're doing a double crochet, you pull it through, but you don't continue with that. You go into the next one, pull it through again. So we end up with three on the hook. We then twist and pull through all three. That is a decrease. Then I'm gonna do four individual double crochets. One, two, three and four we're going to do a decrease again so we go in as if we're doing the stitch we pull through but we don't finish the stitch we go into the next one we pull it through we have three on here we pull it through all three we need four individuals one two three and four we need another decrease so we go in pull through in the next one pull through if you've got three on the hook you know you've done it and pull through all three four individuals one two three and four you're going to do two together again make sure there's three pull it through and just four individuals and we've done that round one two three and four right I'm going to move this up now because it does move while you're doing just the basic rounds because it's spiral it affects your positioning for that we're going to put the eyes in now now this is a little bit of guesswork because obviously when it's not stuffed it's not easy to work it out so I would say what we've got maybe two centimeters between the eyes there you'll know you might want to do them closer you might want to do them wider it's however you want to pop them in so I'm going to pop it one in there and think about there. is that about the same width that might be a little bit wider let's have a look let's do a little comparison it's a little bit wider so I'm going to bring it in slightly just check before you put the backs on if that's all yes that's better now you don't have to use safety eyes please be aware of what age group you're making these for if they're for very young children I wouldn't recommend safety eyes or um, anything else I know most toys do have safety eyes in but you do have to be careful with the quality of them be aware of cheap ones right let me keep this still it's wobbling about one there we go that's one on I mean these and also read the instructions because these you have to have dome up to put on but some are different shapes uh, some are even metal I don't like the metal ones but uh, here we go keep it from wobbling it keeps falling over <laughs> one Oh, that one doesn't want to go on. It doesn't want to go on. Come on, let's get you straight. Two more clicks and you're in. 
one two there we go sometimes it's best to have something soft not too not thick soft but just something so it doesn't slide about it's sliding about a bit on this one so that's our eyes in and i think it looks cute already just with the little eyes and we're going to carry on with our crochet we're going to do one round of just one double crochet into each stitch so we have decreased as you know so we should have about 20 stitches i should we should have 20 stitches not about 20 stitches but i'm not going to count i'm just going to use my stitch marker so one double crochet into every single one The head is really the biggest part to do. I mean, the body's not far behind. There's not much between them. But uh, I'd say the head's probably the biggest bit. Because the hood is like half the head, isn't it? Because it's just a hood. Um, and the ears. The ears don't take two minutes. I can hear the dog grumbling for some reason. Like there's some workmen outside. I can hear like a, you know, like a reversing sort of beeping sound i think it could be that that's what she doesn't like right so that was round on one double crochet we're now going to decrease till closed but again we need to remember to stuff so i'm going to take my stitch marker out because it's just going to be two together two togethers all the time so this is a good practice for you two togethers so in and pull it through but tighten it in between each one because sometimes when you're decreasing you can get little gaps tighten so one two together tighten one together tighten one two together tighten one two together tighten it does make a difference if you don't don't tighten it up one so tighten. Just having a double check that I'm on the screen there. And tighten. We're nearly at a point where we need to stuff because otherwise the hole will get too small. To be honest, I do try and get the hole as small as possible before I do stuff, but then it does make it hard to stuff. But the stuffing does get in the way sometimes. Right, I'm going to stop there just to stuff it. Right, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this. Make sure, though, this is nice and tight. If you're worried about that coming undone, you can actually stitch it in just inside. So sort of, sort of stitch around and I'm just going to stuff it in because I know it's pretty tight. But not everybody gets that hole tight. So we have our toy grade stuffing here. And in it goes. Doesn't want to go in. That's why I say sometimes making the hole small is good because you don't get stuffing in the way, but then it's harder to stuff. Right, let's have a look at that. You do quite often need to adjust the eyes in the stuffing as well to get them flat because sometimes it twists them, so be careful with that. I think that feels about the same as that one. Again, that's another thing where your size will change. Obviously, if you don't, sometimes if you overstuff it, it'll make it bigger. If you understuff it, it'll make it smaller. I think that'll do for now. We'll go a little bit further and then I'll decide whether I want any more stuffing in there. But I think we might be okay. Right, so off we go. Two togethers. Pull it tight. And tight. Yeah, I think this stuffing's about okay, actually. You'll know how sort of sort of tight or how hard or soft you want your item. It does need to be relatively solid because it's having the hood go round it and we need it to fit. Um, oh, I'm going to leave it there. You're not going to see it anyway because it's going to be under. You do need to close it up as much as possible, but it's it's not visible this time. So it's not end of the world if it's not too perfect. Right, where's my needles? Which one shall I have? This one. Right, I'm just going to get rid of this end and then we can say the head is completely done. And I'm not messing about with bits and bobs at the end. So I'm just going to take it across a couple of times. Fills in any gaps as well if there's a tiny gap. And then push it all the way through and it's gone. 
one piece done move that piece of yarn out of the way just give it a little roll a little squish around make sure these eyes are positioned nicely you can decide which way up because i know last time i did it i was thinking oh do i have the eyes lower which it would be if it's that way or higher if it's that way up to you doesn't matter so that's our head done so we can also move that sort of peachy color away and we're going to jump for the blue now again i've got to find the beginning there we are we're going to do the hood next which as you can see is roughly the shape of the hat but this time this is at the back not at the top So it's exactly the same up to a certain point, exactly the same. So we're going to do two chain, six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two double crochets in each one. One, two, three, four, remember this is two in each, five and six. Gonna tighten up that center point and we're gonna do the same as with the head, a two in each again. One thing I will comment on, this yarn, this brown that I used, feels a lot thicker they are both double knit yarns but this blue is a lot finer but it is a starcraft the same as the head so hopefully we should be okay i did feel this was a little bit chunky when i was using it it sort of felt i don't know harder to work with but this blue is nice and soft so two in each of these 12 to give us our 24. that's two in that one and two in that one so that's two three, four, five, six, halfway there, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Eleven. One more pair. And twelve. Now from then on we did just do double crochet rounds, which we're going to do here as well. But we're going to need a few more because we're not coming down to then decrease, but we do need it to come to sort of like the front of his head there. So I am going to do a little bit more. So we're going to pop our stitch marker in and off we go with our double crochet rounds. Now I've said six because like I said that yarn felt a bit thicker. I am now contemplating so if you're planning on fast forwarding check it on the head before you might want seven. I'm just wondering whether I will because this yarn is it's not thinner that's the wrong word i think the other one was a little bit thick and also depending on where you are in the world um i think the nearest to a double knit in some places is a worsted weight i might be wrong there it's not a weight we have here so it's not one i've used and if so i've been told that the worsted is slightly probably nearer that brown and it's slightly thicker it's sort of more between our double knit and our aran yarn so you will need to play about i think this might be classed as a sports weight i really don't know i get very confused with that there are different ones but because i don't get the opportunity to use them i can't compare them because obviously i don't have those yarns right i'm going to be marking these now so that was round one already i think it's gonna look very cute in this blue so we're on our second round so uh, we'll uh, just lift the pace a little bit and remember you can slow me down if it's too fast it's already starting to curl it's 
that is good it means it's getting its shape right we are round for number two one more stitch actually right so that's two rounds i'm just going to push it outwards so we know which side we're working on because this is the right side this is the wrong side as it took me a long time to find that because i wondered why all my work was like this because i was doing everything inside out it sort of does create an effect i must admit but in the early days i had nobody to tell me otherwise there was no youtube but if i'd have paid attention the books did say so So this is our third round. I mentioned at the beginning, um, Easter or not Easter, I, it doesn't really matter. I think they make great little Easter gifts, especially sort of in these pastel colours. Um, I think they would look fabulous with some Easter eggs. Um, but, you know, it's just a cute little bunny. It can be any time of year, can't it? So that's three. Number four. Nearly round for our fourth round. So we've not got much more to do, have we? And I've got more sirens. She does sometimes bark at the sirens. Oh no, we haven't. She's not. I think it depends what mood she's in. Sometimes the dog likes to bark at absolutely everything. And other times um, she doesn't bark at anything. I think she might go be going a little tiny weeny bit deaf. She is 11 now. Um, but she's still, well, she's still sharp as anything when you shake the treats pot, put it that way. But there are certain things she doesn't seem to hear as well nowadays. We're almost at number five, so hopefully then there is only one more that we do need to check. Right, so that's our round five, my last round before I check it. I think, to be honest, it's going to be okay, but it, I don't know, we'll see. Because you need it far enough round so it comes under the chin slightly so you can attach the two parts of the bodies together. Otherwise it becomes a bit of a hat rather than uh, a hood. Almost there. It's a very strange weather today. It's incredibly windy, but it's also very sunny. Um, but I bet it's cold out there. I've not been outside yet. I've got to later. Right, so let's have a look how this fits. So basically, you're taking the head and you're pushing it in. So I think it needs an extra round. I think that's uh, fallen short very slightly and I think it's just purely because this is a thicker yarn. That's something I ought to be more aware of. I mean, you can pull it in a little bit, but you don't want to have to be really struggling to do it. So I'm going to do another round. And I'm actually going to write that down before I finish that it's going to be seven because I'm going to be making the pattern, uh, typing the pattern up uh, for you to purchase after this. So I need to make sure it's all on a standard double knit yarn so this is our seventh round then but depending on your tension and your yarn you may need to adjust that anyway I 
I said, I thought it was thick. It was weird. I didn't really notice it that much while I was crocheting. But, you know, when I came to sewing it together, it felt heavy. It, it felt a little bit more clumsy. I didn't feel it gave me sort of a neat enough edge. So I think it's just purely because it's a thicker and it's probably a cheaper yarn as well. Problem is my ball bands fall off them. And I just shove them in the boxes into categories of double knit, etc. Um, let's have a look. Shall we see? Let's see. So I sort of lose track. I shouldn't really, but I don't know how sort of mark off what they are when the ball band falls off yeah a little eskimo isn't it yes that's good because like i say we just need it so that you can then sew the body onto that area i'm pleased with that that's good so that is seven rounds then take my stitch marker out get back in there to finish it off i'm going to do a slip stitch to finish pull it through I've left enough on there to do any sewing up, so leave some nice long ends on these and fasten it off. We don't need this bit, but I won't get rid of it all. It just keeps it so it's not going to come loose. So I'm going to shove that in there, put it on the head, and I'm going to have this at the bottom because I'm going to be stitching around there, but we're not going to do that for a moment. We're going to move on to the body. Now, I've got the body out a couple of times. Um, so I've actually just turned my page over. So here we go. Starts the same again. That's the thing with amigurumi. When you've got one style, you can do so many different things with it. So two chain. Yeah, you got it. Six double crochet into that first one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five and six and we're not going to go for let me have a look we will go for two in each for the first one but then the increasing is going to be a bit different from the last one so we need two in each two in each of the six giving us 12. one two three four five and six now i'll not put my stitch marker in now but you could if you wanted to if you were just following the pattern i'm going to be doing an increase of just four each time for each round so first off we're going to have two in one stitch which is our increase and then one in the following three and you're going to do that four times so i'm going to count it out this time so this is our increase so two in this one, one in each of the next three. One, two, and three. Two in the next one. One in the next three. One, two, and three. This is our third increase. So two in this one. One in the next three. One two and three we've got one more increase two in this one and one in the next three one two and three so that's our increase round number one i'm going to pop the stitch marker in because it's just a guide sometimes especially if you're talking like i am you sort of go oh did i do three did i four and it's just nice if you know you know any of the stitch marker you've only done three so let's squeeze that in there so we've got our stitch marker into place and we're going to have another increase round of a similar type you're going to do two in the first one and one in each of the next four so we have a two and then we have one, 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 and one. That is set number one. So set two. Two in the first one. And then one in each of the next four. One, two, three, and four. That's our second increase. So you can see we're about halfway, so that makes sense. Two in the next one. One in the next four. One, two, three, and four. 
And our last one, I think I must have placed that stitch marker wrong. Let me just check my stitches a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, I just miscounted there. We did do four. We did. That's why we're back at the stitch marker. That's why I say the stitch marker is a good idea if you lose track of what you're doing. I needed 20 stitches and I have 20 stitches. Let me just quickly add that up, make sure I've done that right. That would have been five, five times four would have been 20. Yes, we're okay there. I always double check the patterns before I type them up. If you ever find a problem though, let me know because if you've not got somebody else there to check it, it's very easy to make a mistake. So just give me a shout, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll always make a correction and then send you another pattern anyway, if that is the problem. We're gonna now do just four rounds of double crochet. One. Do keep going, we should have our 20. So I'm just going to go stitch marker to stitch marker, in fact. I'm just wondering whether the body is going to come out slightly smaller, you know, because the head, the hood did. It doesn't matter for this, I don't think. I think it looks quite, quite cute. It's got this little body. I know I did a cat version for my sister and that had got a tiny body in comparison and that was really cute. So we're on our first round of just one double crochet in each. This is where you're getting the length of the body. So you may decide to do it longer, you may decide to do it shorter. Again, entirely up to you. Gives you a bit of variation, sort of mixes it up, especially do a little family of them, perhaps. Right, we're on our second round. Tell you what, this yarn is easier to work with. That other one felt really stiff. Um, as I say, I know Stylecraft isn't mega expensive. It's probably more expensive than that brown one. Um, so yeah shop around thing is it's hard at the moment because you can't go into a shop to uh, check the quality of the yarn and it does make a difference i've bought stuff online because of that sometimes and um i've been stung because you can't feel what the yarn's like and it comes through and then you're really disappointed and there's not a lot you can do i suppose you could send it back but it's sort of probably more trouble than it's worth so i've always kept it right that's our second round but I do know the certain yarns I like, and Stylecraft is one of theirs. So we're on, did I say? Yes, we're on our third one. See, it's why I write it down, because I forget. I really do like the blue, actually. I think it works. I'd like to do a pink, but I think the pink I've got is a little bit too too candy pink it's a bit too bright i don't know i might try it i'll end up with a set of them at this rate and i was only going to do one because this was just one i was going to keep for myself right so we need one more round That looks about right. We're going to have a decrease round next and get round to that stitch marker. Two more stitches, I think. Yeah, that lines up nicely with my stitch marker now. So we're going to have a bit of a decrease. And again, it's going to be very similar to how we did the increase. It's going to be in a set of four. So you're going to do two together, then one, two, three. Just round to the stitch marker. So here we go. Two together. Remember, you need three on there to pull through all three. And then three stitches. One two and three two together and then one two three one two and three two together one two and three and our last one two together one two and three. I'm going to take the stitch marker out now because it's a little bit redundant. We're going to do a double crochet round. Now I know I've got 16 stitches and to be honest I'd rather count the 16 stitches than use the stitch marker at this point but you can leave it in if you want I suppose. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, nearly there, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. We're going to have one more decrease round, which will get us down to twelve stitches. And it's, again, it's the same. It's two together, and then one in each two times four. So off we go. So two together. Tighten, remember, if it's getting a bit loose, two stitches. That's our first one. The second one, two together, two stitches. Two together, two stitches. One more time. Two together, and two stitches. And just finish off with a slip stitch just to neaten it off. Leave enough again for sewing on. You're only sewing onto the body, so you don't really onto the body, onto the head, so you don't really need that much. But it's always best to have plenty there. You can always cut it off afterwards. Right, so we have our little body. Look, it's got a little body. Not going to do anything with that either yet. We're going to do the ears. Now, for your demonstration purposes, I will do one ear and then we will sew him together. Because you don't need to see me make two ears. Again, they are quite quick. We are going to do exactly the same, slip knot time. Let's move all that out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of the picture. And we're going to do six double crochets after our two chain. Two chain and six double crochets into the first chain. One. Two. Three. Four five and six now we're going to have one little increase it's not a big increase you're going to do two in one and one in one times three to give us nine stitches so into our first stitch do two double crochets one two in our second one do one double crochet to our third one two double crochets into number four one double crochet and into number five, two. And in number six, it's one. So that is it, where there is no more increasing at all. Just tighten it up, really tighten that one up. And we're going to be doing just one double crochet into each stitch, and you're going to continually do that on a spiral till you decide on the length of the ear. This is the length I'm going to be doing with you, but you may choose to do them longer. You may want to position them different. I mean, that looks quite cute, doesn't it? You position them sort of like down that way. There's lots of different things you can do. So it's up to you at this point. So off we go. One double crochet into each of those nine stitches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight and nine that's one round and um, mark it off i've actually got four on here but again because i've said about this yarn i might do five so i want to turn that out though first make it easier turn it out so you've got right side facing and off we go again this is our second round one two three four i sort of hold it a bit like a thimble when i'm doing it like this Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That was round two. Round number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight and nine that was our third round now this is going to be the fourth one this is going to be the decider with this particular yarn because i think i'm going to be doing an extra one so i've got four written down but this is number four and that looks a little bit short to me two three four five six seven eight and nine so that's the four i think that's a little bit short so i am going to do five i'm just going to write down five there though ready to write the pattern up so i get it properly for you right last round just one in each one one 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, squeaky wool, and nine, and just a slip stitch to finish, and done. Again, leave enough on there so you can sew it up. Obviously, he needs two ears. We won't do that at the moment. I will do that after because I will get him finished because I think he's too cute not to. So let's have a look what we've got. That's for sewing it around the head. We know that. This is for sewing on. So we don't need this middle bit. So use it as a bit of stuffing. And let's get this stuffing out. Get it all the way in, make sure it's fully in there. It's amazing how much stuffing you need. You quite often need a lot more than you think because it compacts down. But you don't want it to be too hard, but you do need it to be quite full because it's got to sort of hold the head. I think that's about right. Didn't that look about right? I think so. Right, now I'll show you what I did with this. So let me find my needle. Again, I'm using quite a fine wool needle because I think your stitches are better if you do. Now, what I want to do is, because there's going to be hair here, I don't want to stitch this to the head. That's too close. So I'm going to actually be running on this line. It just holds it in place. So I'm going to just get into position, oh, if I can. That will do me. So that just holds it there. And I'm just going to be running along this line don't pull it too tight though because then also it makes it look like the hood is properly separate if you do it too close it looks like it's part of the head make sure you are going through the head as well it's very easy just to pick up the top bit oh like that there we go every now and again just give it a squish make sure you're not doing it too tight You could do a little mouth on this as well if you wanted to. That's where your sort of personality comes into waking things. I had considered doing a fluffy edge. So I have got some fluffy yarn. Oh, my needles come out. Um, I thought that might be quite cute. But I didn't know whether it should look a little bit too much like an Eskimo hat rather than what I was looking for. And if it's a bunny for Easter, I suppose he doesn't want to be in anything snowy. Right, so I'm just going to finish that off with a little knot on this side. She did cut that a little bit short, didn't I? Right, and I'm going to push it through. Again, this is up to you how many times you do it. I do like to make it quite secure. And that's number three. Quite often it's three support for whatever reason. So trim that off. So we have our little head. Make sure you're happy with it. Decide which way up the eyes are going. This one, those eyes are that way, so I am going to go for that. So my hair is going to go along here. So a little bit of black yarn. I'm just pull my sleeves up, they're getting in the way. Again, sharpish needle. That might be a bit long, but uh, like I said, I'd rather it be a bit longer. A nice knot. Now the knot needs to be not too big, so it's going to be visible anywhere, but it needs to be big enough to hold. So I'm going to take it from the bottom and I'm going to go to one side here because this bit's going to have that sewn on so it's not the end of the world as it turns out that has gone through it doesn't always so what I'm going to do is just a little stitch down there take it a little bit higher so I'm going just under the hood and this one's just going to be in the same place near as damn it and I pull the hood back a bit so I can see where I'm going and there we go now this one I'm going to take slightly to one side because it's a bit of a fringy sort of area and I've gone back into the same one. This just takes a bit of practice. I'm not perfect at doing this. I'm not too bad. It seems to work out okay. But uh, it does take a bit of practice to get it right. And each one's going to be different. That doesn't matter. I'm not planning on it being the same. I sort of want it to be a bit different. So when the hood comes over, can you see? Now this one's got a slightly more different fringe to that one. So I'm going to take it over this side this time. And I'm going to back in the same one. 
because I want it to come out like that. I'll do a shorter piece there. So sometimes I go back into the same hole, sometimes I don't. Because I felt there was a gap there, that's why I've done that. Not shall I? Oh, I think that's okay. Shall I, Shanta? Mm, yes, I'm going to, because there is a bit of a gap there. You can always go back and fill the gaps in if you don't like it. You can move it around as you want. Right, I'm going to start to come down the one side now. the last one so I can put that there and that in there now again because it's under here I can tie a tiny weeny 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 knot in a second I'm sure that comes forward oh, that's forward enough so we do one more um, yes no yes no yes no no right I'm having a look at that now. This is where you decide, do you need any more? Now, imagine that's going to come back over. No, I think that's okay. I don't know whether I should do one there. This is the only thing with the actual sewing up and finishing off can take longer. So all I'm going to do is just sneak through back there and put another one in there. It's going to take my wool all the way through so I can have a look. Yeah, that's a bit better. I prefer that. But again, it's up to you how you do that. So I'm not going to overly worry about doing a little knot. I did do a little one there. It wasn't a big one. But if I just push this through, 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 through and through, it will hold itself in the stuffing. And trim it off. So we now have our little head. Little body time. That is most definitely too much yarn there. I'm going to get rid of some of that. It does make it difficult and it tangles if you've got too much. So we need to position the head and the body. So you can still see part of the hood here because it looks like it's part of the same outfit. Yes, if you bring it too much forward, it suddenly becomes a hat rather than a hood. So I'm going to start at the back. And just a little stitch in there to hold it in place because it does wiggle about a bit, this one. And I'm just picking up a stitch from the head body and a stitch from the head. Stitch from the body, stitch from the head. Yep, yeah, so that's coming together nicely there. Make sure we reposition because otherwise, look, he's going to be sideways. Make sure you keep him in exactly the same place. It's sort of a case of holding it and sort of squishing it a little bit, but not enough uh, that you can't get to your stitches. There's definitely an art sewing up. I still don't think I've mastered it. I'm not bad. Most of it's quite invisible now when I do it, but... Uh, I'm sure I could do it better. It can actually be the complete make or break of a piece as well. Sometimes you can crochet something beautiful if it has not stitched together properly. It it can come oh, throwing it away. It can completely spoil it. Looks like it's looking upwards a little bit, this one, compared with my other one. That doesn't matter. It gives it a bit of character. I find it really awkward. To, I know I've said it before to um, sew for the video because I've got to like hold it out. I've normally got it really close to my body. I mean, obviously you don't have to follow the same method of my sewing up, whatever works for you. You may have found a much better way than me. Right, I am going to do a knot this time. Pull it nice and tight. And again, through the head. This poor little thing <laughs> keeps going through the head. And again. And one more time. 
make sure it's not too tight before we cut it and cut so there we have we have head and body now so now we need the ear i do really like the blue though i'm really pleased with that so make sure the bit that we started with is nice and tight Put it off a little bit and push the little bit in there that's left over. Now, when I'm sewing ears, I always like this bit to be at the side. I'm going to fold it slightly. And I'm just going to stitch that bottom bit together. Just gives you a little crease in the ear. And again, as I said before, you've got to decide, do you want the ears on the top? Do you want them on their side? I'm going for on the top, so about midway there. Hold it into place and stitch around the base of the ear. It's hard for you to see what I'm doing here, I know. But basically, I'm just picking up a little bit of the ear and a little bit of the head. Make sure it's stitched on nice and firm before you fasten off. I'm going to take it through that way. I'm going to do a tiny knot there. And yes, you've guessed it, it's through the poor thing's head. But I might take it all the way down this time and like through the body as well. Ta da! And fasten off. Now, obviously, this little uh, chappy's only got one ear. We will do the other ear after the fact, because I'm sure you don't need to see me do the second one. I think it's about the same length. In fact, to be honest, the body has come out about the same, even though I was complaining about the yarn. I think it's okay. She's got a slight head tilt there, but I think that's sort of cute. Now, there are some people who will put a little bit of blush on these. I've seen different methods of that. You're better off watching somebody who's an expert on that rather than myself. I know you can literally use blusher and just put it on with a cotton bud, but I've left it clear because I think it's up to you how you do that now as I mentioned this was the little bit of lace that I did and just taking normal sewing cotton I stitched that around now if you mentioned earlier I mentioned fluff didn't I but I said I didn't think fluff would work but you could always use a lace around the headpiece as well but I think just round there for now now I mentioned this pom-pom Where's my pom-pom maker gone? Here it is. Now, this is a clover one, the one I like to use. Its size, if you want to know, is on here somewhere. It's a number 25 on there. So that's the sizing. Um, this worked out for this size pom-pom. You can make a bigger one and cut it down, of course, depending on your pom-pom facilities. If you're not using one of these, is the old school way of just sort of wrapping it round. Whichever way you want to make a pom-pom. You may have got a ready-bought pom-pom, because I know I've got some that actually are about that size. Um, I think I just got them from the pound shop, actually. So you can get pom-poms ready-made as well if it's not something you want to do. So all in all, that is our little bunny for today. I'll get this little fellow finished because I want to take a photo of him to put on the thing. On the thing, that's a good term, isn't it? Put it on the thumbnail so you can see him as well. So I'll pop them both together like that. But hopefully you enjoyed doing that. Hopefully you're going to get some done for Easter. That's I think they make really cute little gifts. But again, mention the eyes watch out for what age group i wouldn't recommend you use these for babies for example um in case there's any loose bits and i don't think pom-poms are a great idea for babies either but i would stitch the eye detail on with some embroidery thread or some wool rather than doing it this way you could do some sleepy eyes with them with the with the yarn instead that's another way of doing it so thank you very much for watching if you do enjoy my work please like subscribe and share and if you want to know when i've actually uploaded a new video you click on the little bell and it's your notification bell and it'll let you know when i've done my next project it is going to be dolly outfits next i have got a cindy sort of shawl and hat to do so for any sort of fashion dolls that's going to be my next one but thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon bye